God, welcome to Wednesday night, Heartland Church. Hallelujah. I've been having withdrawals. <laughs> I was used to being with you all the time, all the time, all the time. Hallelujah. It's good to be in the house of the Lord with you tonight. Man, I cannot wait for the word. I'm still on, on overflow from the weekend. Testimonies are still pouring in. I'm telling you, God is good and he is faithful. People are still coming in. They're swallowing their pizza as fast as they can swallow it. <laughs> Praise God. But Winter Bible Seminar was over the top. The, from, from MOH to people coming in to just pressing in. And, and, and I'm telling you, when we give God our undivided attention, he shows up big. And it, it was amazing. It was just beautiful. The, the people that came in from outside of the church uh, that filled out the, the communication cards, it was, it was beautiful. It was just, you know, I uh, did some, um, some feedback today with them, and it's just, they're just blown away they, uh, of feeling the love of God, feeling the spirit of God, and, and mendings are, are, have already started. The things that they had, you know, purposely believed God to get out of the seminar. They're, it's started happening, and it's just the testimonies are just beautiful. All glory to God. Amen. So tonight is, I'm just going to say, it's a, it's a continuation of where we are. It's a continuation of what the Spirit of God's doing in each and every one of our lives. It's a continuation of what, where he's taken us as a body, as a church, and I'm pulling on the anointing of God tonight. Because you know what? Today is, a, is we need our daily bread. Amen? Hallelujah. So everybody take a deep breath. And let the day go, because we're here now. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we come boldly before you in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord God, for tonight. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the word, Lord God, that will be spoken with boldness. Lord God, we thank you for unction for Pastor Jason. Father, we thank you, Lord God. We have eyes to see. We have ears to hear, and we have a heart to understand, Lord God, what the Spirit of God is saying to us for such a time as this today. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So good to be here this weekend. It feels like we've had it back to back to back to back, and I'm not grappling. But Sunday evening at 6 o'clock, woman to woman, right here. 6 to 7 30 and so it don't ask me what we're going to speak about because it like i said it's a fresh word and so uh when you get here it'll be hot and ready amen hallelujah ladies bring somebody bring somebody it's going to be good might be a little bit i, I think we're going to be a little bit on the fun side i don't know i'm, I'm sensing fun but praise god praise the lord well brother time will call you up here and we will receive tithe and offering sir Glory to God. Hallelujah. Man, it's good to be here. I couldn't wait to get here. I'm ready. I'm going to ask you if you've got tithe or you've got seed, and you got an envelope filled out. If you don't have an envelope, please get one. It really helps our, our ladies in the accounting. I'm going to ask you to hold it in your hand while we talk about this. I, I like to do that myself, and if you just refuse, that's okay. Nobody's going to judge you, but... Brother Bob and, and Miss Connie are out of town, and, and so I'm just filling in. <laughs> Let's turn to Luke 6, 38. And, and I'm going to repeat what Brother Bob says. If Heartland isn't your home church, that's not where your tithe belongs, not here. It's a great place to sow seed, and we receive it and we bless it in the name of Jesus. But you, you take the tithe to the storehouse that's feeding you. Uh, this stuff, I, I began to approach sowing. We believe the tithe, and I believe most of us understand that the tithe's without question. That's what blesses the 90. The 10 is what puts the blessing of God on the 90. And, and so I'm going to focus just a little bit more on the seed. We, I believe we understand how important the tithe is and I believe we understand how important the seed is but 
several years ago, man, when God really began to make revelation in mine and Sarah's life about sowing, above the tithe and, and above those times where you just, I believe I need to give that person $20 or I need to buy their meal. Above that, I'm talking about consistent sowing. Man, I do this every paycheck as if it was the tithe because I believe the Lord led me to. And, and we can take you to lots of scriptures and, and I can prove to you the Lord's led you to give. But I, I approach it very seriously with, with reverence and there's a holiness to this. You know, this is something that in the natural we've all labored to get. Thank God for the jobs. He's the provider, but we had to do something in the natural to get this. And God believes it's holy. So as you're holding it and as we begin to look at some of the word, just look at it the way God does. This is holy. And and the building fund hasn't stopped since the the rise and build service. So if you have that in your heart, if you have ecclesia in your heart, you have renovate in your heart, double digits is another area. It, just be sure to be specific on your envelope. Whatever God's leading you to do out of the abundance of your heart. Uh, so we're at Luke 6. I said 38. I'm going to back up to 37. <clears throat> and, and the reason why is because if you listen to 37, it's going to condition your heart to give. We give out of faith. Faith works through love. Without love, my faith's not going to be effective for me. might be effective for others. doesn't mean that when I walk up and, and hand somebody a $100 bill to pay their electric bill, that it doesn't bless them. But my faith is not going to be effective for me if I'm not rooted and motivated and grounded in the love of God. Be you therefore merciful. Your Father is also merciful. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you shall be forgiven. Now we're going to get into the given. So we've conditioned our heart. Father, by faith, we release any odd against anybody. We're not going to stand before you and hold unforgiveness and bitterness in our heart. We release it in the name of Jesus. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure pressed down and shaken together and running over shall men give into your bosom for with the same measure that you meet with all it shall be measured back to you again and and one thing I'd like to just point out as we're talking about this portion of scripture thank God for all the times that I was the receiver from other men and, and ladies this is a mankind not a, a gender thing I thank God for all those times I was a receiver. But I thank God just as much and actually maybe just a little bit more for the times that I'm the man, the human, that's able to give. Man, that's a wonderful place, y'all. That, that comes from the heart and the love of God. And the measure that you're giving is not the amount. Don't get, ever get stuck on the amount. If you pull out lint out of the bottom of your pocket, because that's the only thing you got, and you put it in that envelope and you release faith with it, God's looking at the heart. He's always concerned about the heart. He's never concerned about the action. The action is just what I do to follow what God's put in my heart. It's how, how my faith has works, we could say. <clears throat> so don't be concerned about the amount. I've, I've put lots of pocket knives and, and really nice pins in this envelope because that was all I had. But man, I, I'm gonna sow something. I'm gonna give unto the Lord and, and do it with a cheerful heart. So hold it in your hand. If you wanna hold it up boldly, hold it up boldly. Man, we're doing something as unto the Lord right now. Father, we thank you for your word. It's your word that motivates us and gives us faith to give. Lord, I ask you that you just bless the people as they give from their heart. We thank you for the Spirit of God that leads us into all things. Lord, don't ever let us just walk through life. Let us be looking for your divine appointments and places to sow not only your love, but your seed of financial freedom to others. We thank you for your grace to give. There's a grace that comes upon us to give because if you've released the commandment to do it, 
the empowerment is there for us to to walk it through we love you tonight and we honor you with this gift with this seed with the tithe and because your word says it is we call it the same thing we say to the tithe and the seed we command you to be fruitful and multiply not only in our own lives but we're asking you and and believing for you to multiply the seed sown into this house for the blessing of the Lord to spill out to the people in the name of Jesus we pray amen amen thank you very much pastor Jay let's stand on our feet while we're giving let's worship the Lord just for a minute here thank you Lord Jesus I believe you're here by appointment tonight how are you get some get some love in before we start <laughs> I believe we're here on assignment tonight by appointment let's lift our hands and let's worship him the Bible says I would that people would pray everywhere lifting up holy hands without wrath and without doubting that's two things that'll hinder our prayer so no wrath and no doubting <laughs> Father, we worship you right now. We worship Jesus. We're so glad to be in the presence of God, the presence of the Word, the presence of faith, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, gentleness, faith, meekness, and the spirit of self-control that lives in us. Father, we cast all care upon you, for you care for us. We're so grateful that your word tells us that you will perfect the things that concern us. And we're so grateful for so many testimonies. So many testimonies already. From the Winter Bible Seminar, we give you all the glory for it. We thank you. We confess that Jesus is Lord. God raised him from and out of death. And because of that, we have no fear of death death or fear of being separated from God eternally we're so grateful Lord for your mercy and the covenant that you've cut between Jesus and that our faith in him makes him our representative our go-between our mediator our lawyer our defense attorney and we give you praise tonight we ask and we believe, have believed, and we ask once more tonight, we ask for the anointing of God. I ask for the anointing of God to be on every person to hear the word of the Lord. We thank you for the anointing. It is the difference maker. You accomplish so much, Lord, in the presence of the anointing. We thank you that that anointing will heal broken hearts. It will open the eyes of our inner man where the enemy has blinded us and deceived us. We thank you, Lord, that that anointing will set the captive free. Even if it comes through progression and layer after layer, freedom is theirs. Freedom is ours. We give you the glory and the honor. Amen. Miss Kelsey, come share with me right quick, please. When it's red, it's on red. Y'all check this out, please. This is just one of many. I'm telling you, many, many, many. Go ahead. Okay. So um, I came into the Winter Bible Seminar believing for all kinds of things. And when we were sitting there doing our 101 scriptures, people started saying, I believe for kidneys to be regrown. And I wasn't even thinking of this, but the Lord brought in my gallbladder. And I just yelled out, gallbladder. And Miss Jody saw me, and she knows my story. Um, eight years ago, I had to have emergency surgery to get my gallbladder removed. And um, since then, I have not been able to eat a lot of things. And then recently, it's been everything that I've ate. I would get physically sick and 30 to an hour in the bathroom, like pain, doubled over. Um, anyways, and so I said that. I didn't really think anything about it. I'm believing for what I came in thinking that I needed to 
be believing for. So we came up here to get prayed for, and at this point, I'm still thinking of what else I have in my mind that I want to get prayed for. And Miss Jeannie, thank you for being obedient. She had to, she had something in her heart she needed to share about her digestive system. Miss Jody says, where's Kelsey? And she was obedient also. She grabbed my hand and Miss Jeannie prayed over me. And y'all, I, I just felt released at that moment. After church service, my kids said, we want McDonald's. I haven't been able to eat at McDonald's in eight years without getting severely sick. We went to McDonald's. By faith, I ordered me a McChicken. I ate that McChicken, did not get sick. The next morning, my mom brought breakfast burritos from McDonald's. I ate two, did not get sick. I have eaten everything greasy that I could possibly get this week. I just had pizza and no pain. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful, y'all? Let's really give God praise. Come, come on. Hallelujah. That, that's a sign and a wonder. That's a miracle. Eight years, man. Come on. That's wonderful. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Now, there has been so many testimonies. Now, I say that to encourage you. If, if, if yours hasn't completely manifested, don't let, don't let testimony discourage you. These are to build your faith, edify you. God's not a respecter of persons, is he? No, huh? No, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And there's been so many testimonies. There's been breakthrough. There's been relationships restored. It is amazing what all can happen in such a short time in the anointing. Isn't that wonderful? And there's things that bring that. Um, I pray that you're continually to be, even though the, the Winter Bible Seminar is over, you're sensitive in your spirit. You know, don't just go hog wild back into everything you fasted and everything. Stay sensitive. Stay sensitive. God wants to manifest like that every time we gather. That's his will. And it's sure enough my will for sure. That every time we come together. You know, we had, we had some uh, extraordinary manifestations. And God will, through the, one of the gifts of the Spirit is called the discernment of spirits or discerning of spirits. A lot of times people say, I believe I have the gift of discernment. Well, there's not such a thing. The gift is the discernment of spirits. It's not a gift of criticalness. It's not a gift of suspicion. And it's not just discernment. We all, we all have discernment by the Spirit of God. But there's also a manifestation of the Spirit in 1 Corinthians 12 where he talks about the word of knowledge, word of wisdom, tongues, interpretation, prophecy, discerning of spirits. And that literally is when God opens your eyes and he pulls back and allows you to see into the realm of the spirit. Uh, and during worship, I believe it was uh, Sunday morning. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Sarah started dancing and singing. That's not really Sarah's character. Well, Jody started dancing and singing. That's really not Jody's character. And I was just watching them because the presence of the Lord was so wonderful. You remember that Sunday morning, Darren? It was, it was, it was heavy. Uh, and uh, I saw Jody look at Sarah See, when you're in the spirit, you're one. That's the only place where one is in the spirit. And it's only the anointing. We'll look at the scripture. says that the glory is what makes us one. Without it, we, we're just not one. It's the spirit that makes us one. It's the spirit that makes you and Jesus one. He that's joined to the Lord is one spirit. Well, she looked at her. See, they were both picking up on it. And, and they kept looking out here. And then Sarah, we asked her to share what she was seeing. And she saw, I'm not going to call it a cloud. I don't like that. It, she saw the cloud in here. And Jody looked at her, but right when she, before she started to talk, she said, did you see it too? See, they hadn't been talking to each other. They were both just worshiping the Lord. 
But both of them saw the cloud. Everybody say the cloud. Yeah. I'm not talking about a cumulus clouds and whatever Coach Davis, all the rest he taught me 30 years ago in world geography. But I'm talking about the cloud. Say the cloud. Wow. Say the glory. the glory. Say the anointing. Yeah. Say the Holy Spirit manifest. Holy Spirit. Well, then a woman in the audience after the service told us, she said, I know exactly what you're talking about. She said, I looked up and I just saw smoke everywhere. Everybody say smoke. smoke. Say the glory. the glory. Yeah. So, see, that, that was manifestation of the glory of God. And so, you have a handout if you'll get that out tonight. We're going to continue talking about the anointing. Say the anointing. The, anointing. the glory of God. Look with me, if you would, at 2 Chronicles. It's right there on your handout. 2 Chronicles chapter 5, verse 11 to 14. says, And it came to pass when the priest came out of the most holy place. You remember, there's the outer court, inner court, and most holy place beyond the veil are called the holy of holies, or it's called the holiest of all. And that's where the, the Ark of the Covenant is, the mercy seat, which is the lid on top. Uh, and that's where the presence of God dwelt. They would call it Shekinah glory. The presence of God manifest. Once a year and once a year only, the high priest, not all the priests, but the high priest alone, one time a year, never, ever, ever, except during the Day of Atonement, he goes beyond the veil with a long rope tied to his feet with bells attached to it. He's gone through all kinds of washings and cleansings and baths and mikvahs and all this, this Jewish ceremonial stuff. And he's taking blood that you've brought to represent your covenant sacrifice. That lamb that you've brought is paying the price for you. And you and the high priest go through all kinds of stuff. We don't have time to get into it tonight. And he takes the entrails and burns them in the brazen labor. And he goes over here and goes through all these articles. And if you'll look at the articles, there's, there's article, 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 article. And they were laid out in the shape of a cross if you will study all those articles. And then right on the top of the cross, you get to the presence of God where the mercy seat is. And the Bible says Jesus is our propitiation which is the Greek word that we get we it also means mercy seat and so um, that lamb that high priest you and the high priest lean heavy on the head not the body the head of that that lamb you've brought we spill its blood we take the high priest takes some of the blood of your lamb goes beyond the mercy seat your hope is just that he comes out <laughs> all right there's a, there's a rope with bells and there's a long rope. And that way in case he's not right with God. He died in the presence of God. You don't go in there and get him. You drag him out by the rope. Well, that's once a year on the Day of Atonement. That, that every person was doing this. This was a blood letting of a day. The, the high priest was just soaked in blood at, that, at, at the end of this time period. <clears throat> so... It says that was the most holy place and that veil was rent when Jesus said it is finished. Remember the veil was rent and the presence of God came out. No longer you can't put God back in a box so to say. He came out of, of, of behind the veil. He, and so anyway um, the priest came out of the most holy place. Um, for all the priests who were present and sanctified themselves without keeping to their divisions and the Levites who were the singers all those of Asaph and Heman and Jeduthun with the sons and their brethren stood at the east end of the altar clothed in white linen having cymbals, stringed instruments and harps and with them 120 say 120 120 priests sounding with trumpets indeed it came to pass when the trumpeters and singing singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice, not voices, remember one, one voice, with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the Lord, saying, for he is good for his mercy endures forever. Let's all say that. For he is good for his mercy endures forever. That the house, the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud so that the priests could not, could not,
continue ministering because of the cloud for the glory. So the cloud is the glory. For the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. The glory of the Lord, the cloud, the Holy Spirit manifest filled the house of God, filled the temple of God. Are you following me here? And then you go two chapters later, chapter 7, when Solomon had finished praying, fire came down. Say that. Fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. And the priests could not enter into the house of the Lord. It'd be like us showing up for church and you, just, you can't even get in because the, the presence of God is so strong. Fire came down. The glory of the Lord filled the temple. And the priests could not enter the house of the Lord because the glory, say the glory, the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. The glory filled the Lord's house. The glory filled the Lord's house. When all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord on the temple. They bowed their faces to the ground on the pavement and worshiped and praised the Lord saying, what they say? For he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Exodus 13, 21. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead the way. He led them by the cloud and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light so as to go by day and night he did not take away the pillar of cloud by day or the pillar of fire by night from before the people he never took it away no matter what condition they were in he never took it away aren't you thankful for that now listen this pillar of fire and this cloud that went before them Remember, it led them, it gave them light, it gave them warmth at night. It's freezing cold in the desert at night, and it's blistering hot in the day. It gave them, the cloud gave them shade during the day, and it was leading them. The fire gave them warmth at night, and light at night, and it was leading them. It led them, it kept them, and it protected them. 1 Corinthians 10, 1 to 4, I want to read this to you. You can turn there if you, if you would. 1 Corinthians 10 one through four. First Corinthians ten, verse one to four. It says, My dear fellow believers, you need to understand that all of our Jewish ancestors who walked through a wilderness long ago were under the glory cloud, the Passion Translation says. They were under the glory cloud. And they passed through. I like that. They were under the glory cloud and passed through. Man, I got good news for you. If you'll stay with the Spirit, stay with the glory, stay with the anointing, you'll pass through. No matter how rough it gets, stay with the anointing. Stay with the Word. Stay with the Spirit. Don't go off crazy off in your feelings. You can't trust all your feelings. But you can trust the glory. You can trust the anointing. You can trust the Holy Spirit. You can trust the Word of God. The Spirit of God will always confirm the Word of God. The Word of God will always, it'll always line up and, and, uh, with the Spirit of God. You can't, only the, only, the, only the Word of God can even dissect God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit for us. Only the Word of God is sharp enough to divide you from spirit, soul, and body. Then you get into mind, and then you get into the brain. I mean, you're a very complex being. You can't feel figure you out <laughs> isn't it right so I mean if you ain't got you figured out you sure ain't got nobody else figured out some of you can amen on that if you haven't got you figured out and can't outside of the word and the wisdom of God you sure can't figure out nobody else come on so 
It says they were all under the cloud and they passed through the waters of the sea on both sides. Look at verse 2. They were all immersed into the cloud of glory. Immersed, baptized, baptizo, immersed, fully wet in the cloud of glory. Fully wet, say that, fully wet in the cloud of glory. Into the fellowship of Moses and into the sea. They all ate the same heavenly manna. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. And drank from the same spiritual rock and they, th that traveled with them. And that rock was Christ himself. Moses smote the rock and water came out and fed all the people, over a million people, fed all of their animals and their beasts. On the cross, Jesus was smitten. He was poked with a spear and out of him came blood and water. And he is the living water that will feed anybody that will drink for him. And it's a river that never runs dry. It's a well in you that never, you can't tap that thing. Isn't that wonderful? So that rock that was with them was Christ, the anointed one, but also it was the anointing itself. That was a ma it was a picture of Christ himself, but the manifestation of that came via the Holy Spirit. Now, stay with me here. New covenant realities. Let's go look, look here at Acts chapter 2. Hang on. Flip back to the top of your, your page here. St. Chronicles 5. I just want to go down here. For he, uh, uh, right about three lines from the bottom on the right. For he is good for his mercy endures forever at the top. That the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud. Say that. The house of the Lord was filled with a cloud. Keep reading. So that the priests could not continue ministering. Because of the cloud for the glory of the Lord filled the house. Read the next section with me, please. When Solomon had finished praying, a fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices. And the glory of the Lord filled the temple. And the priests could not enter the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. When all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord on the temple, they bowed their faces to the ground on the pavement and worshiped and praised the Lord saying, for he is good and his mercy endures forever. Go to the bottom, Acts 2, read it with me. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire and one sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, Listen to the passion, if you will. Are you seeing that Acts 2 was the fulfillment of what was happening in 2 Chronicles 5 and 2 Chronicles 7 and other places, the end of the book of Exodus, when they, when they finished building the temple, the same thing happened. The Bible says there was 120 priests, didn't it? Acts chapter 2 tells us in chapter 1 that gathered up in that upper room, there was approximately 120 of them gathered up in that upper room. And the glory filled the temple. And we see that the glory filled the upper room. Same room they took what we call the, the Last Supper in. <clears throat> we, heard, we read about fire coming down and consuming an offering, burnt offering. Well... We read about that pillar of fire. We read about the glory cloud, the cloud being the glory filled the temple. And we just read, and I want to read it from the Passion to you, please. Listen to this, if you will, from Acts chapter 2. And on the day Pentecost was being fulfilled, all the disciples were together in one place. Now listen, 
Suddenly they heard the sound of a violent blast of wind rushing into the house from out of the heavenly realm. The roar of the wind was so overpowering, it was all anyone could bear. Remember that? See, that makes sense because it says that nobody could even enter into the temple in 2 Chronicles. Then all at once, a pillar of fire appeared in front of their eyes. What do you reckon that pillar of fire was? Same one. Same one that led them people. Led the covenant people. Well, here's the new covenant people. The birthday of the church. A pillar of fire appeared in front of their eyes. It, that pillar, separated into cloven tongues or a, it, don't think of this tongue it's, it's a clove it's a divided clove and it busted one pillar of fire bam went into 120 individual now she's a pillar of fire she's a pillar of fire he's a pillar of fire she's a pillar of fire he's a pillar are you following me here and it's not just up on now it's within and I want you to see this. It separated into cloven tongues of fire that engulfed each one of them. Huh? Yes. Now it's not just something they're looking at out here for guidance and, and warmth and direction. Yes. It lives in them. Yes. They were all filled this is very important that you capture this they were all filled and equipped say that they were all filled and equipped with the Holy Spirit and they were inspired to speak in tongues empowered by the Spirit to speak in languages they had never heard it's interesting that at the Tower of Babel God confused the languages and here by the Spirit they're all speaking one language no matter what that language is in the Spirit it's one isn't that wonderful restoration yeah so by the Spirit I want to help us understand when you read they spoke in other tongues. It simply means a language that you were not taught. Yes, sir. It might be perfect <laughs> Greek. Yeah. There's times I'd be praying in the Spirit, and you'll tap into a place in the anointing, and that language will change some. You just keep flowing with it. You'll hear new syllables come up. Yeah. But you've got to start somewhere. Somewhere you've got to put your faith out there. It's not going to make sense. It's faith. It's a vocal miracle. Huh? It's a vocal miracle. Say that. It's a vocal miracle. And we're just going to take our time tonight, okay? I, I, I intentionally used the clock tonight. And I set it for one hour. And we have 36 minutes left. And then we're going we're gonna to close. Because we saw how much God can get done in the anointing. 55 minutes was my longest service. So we just want to take our time and all of us be sensitive. I want you listening on the inside of you too. I don't want you just asphyxiated on me. But I want you sensitive in your inner man too. God may want to speak something to you. See? So that, that pillar of fire separated into... 120 fires and they were all filled and equipped this is interesting I'm gonna read it from the New King James and it filled the whole house where they were sitting and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit that's verse 2 and verse 4 you see that on your notes on the back page two Greek words filled verse 4 it says it, it, it says uh, and it filled the whole house. Verse 4 says they were all filled. That's two different Greek words. Filled and filled is two complete different words. It filled the whole house. First we must say this. Many scholars believe that this house is not the room they're in, but it's their house. Yes, sir. It filled the whole house where they were sitting, and they were all filled. Filled and filled is two Greek words. It filled the house. That is the word pleru. Say that, pleru. That means filled inwardly. And they were all filled. That's pletho, which means filled outwardly. Ah, 
Everybody say, ah, now we're getting somewhere. That pillar of fire, that sound, it moved into the house and it separated into 120. And that house was filled inwardly, pleru. And then that house was pletho, filled outwardly, filled and equipped. Huh? You're filled inwardly for life. You have an unction on the inside and in that unction you know all things. In the unction you do. You don't, know, you don't know anything that the Spirit of God doesn't let you in on. For who has known the mind of the Lord that we may instruct him? No man knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Yea, the Spirit of God knows, yea, the deep things of God. And we've been given the Spirit so that we might know the things of God that have been freely given to us. But we don't know until the unction takes the lid off. That's the eyes of your inward man. That's the spirit of revelation now in operation. There's a difference between education and revelation. Revelation brings an impartation. <laughs> Are you here? Isn't this wonderful, y'all? Say the spirit of revelation. The spirit of wisdom. Yeah. So the Holy Spirit is the one who knows all the things of God, y'all. The deep things of God. And so they were filled their house was filled inwardly, pleru. And then they were filled outwardly, pletho. Filled inwardly for life. He will lead you. He will guide you. He will tell you things to come. He'll show you things to come. He'll remind you. He'll tell you what job you need to take and the one that you don't need to take that job. He may have you do something, but it's not time yet. Don't, to get out of timing is to get out of the will. Not time yet. I know you're excited. Stay calm. Wait on me. They that are led by the Spirit, not them that try to lead the Spirit. They that are led by the Spirit. I have had, listen, a thousand God ideas, brilliant ideas. They weren't mine. They were the Holy Ghost, so I can say they were brilliant. They were brilliant ideas. They were God ideas. They were scriptural ideas. And I was told, let him grow it. And I'd go to Pastor Ken, just about to explode with it. Come on. Listen to me. Until it moves you, it's not going to move nobody. If you're not sold on it, you can't sell it to nobody. Huh? And there's a difference between being pleru without pletho. I used to go to a church that they don't believe in Plato. They believe in Plato, but they don't believe in Plato. They believe in Plato. Not really. <laughs> they believe in being filled inwardly. Listen, people that say, well, you know, we don't really believe in the ministry of the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. Well, then what you're telling me is you don't believe in the ministry of Jesus, and you're also telling me you don't believe you can be born again because the Spirit of God is the one that baptizes you into Jesus. Romans 8 and 9 says, if any man does not have the Spirit of Christ, he's not, he doesn't belong to Christ. That tells me that you're still the old man because it's the Spirit of God that circumcises. He's the one that, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Well, if you don't believe in the Holy Spirit, you can't believe in Christ, which is the anointing which the Spirit of the Lord has anointed. They're two together. Are you here? So... We believe in the Spirit of God. We believe in His manifestations. Um, uh, let, let's keep going here. So, so are we, do we see, first of all, before we move on, that what we read about in the Chronicles, and again in the Chronicles, that came to pass in a whole new fulfilling way in Acts 2. What used to fill the temple now filled the temple. Huh? What used to fill the temple filled the house. Huh? Furnished and equipped. I want us to read something about furnished and equipped. Go to John 14, 15, if you will. John 14, 15. John 14, 15. Thank you, Jesus. It's good to gather around the table of the Lord. And break open the bread of life. 
we're open to any manifestation tonight. He may just want to have a teaching service. We need those. We're going to read verse 15 to 20. And I'm going to read it from the Passion. I just really like the way it reads. Where did I say 14, 15? Fourteen, fifteen. Loving me empowers you. Oh, I like that. See, the King James says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. That is true. But, it, but again, it's a love relationship is why I keep it. Isn't that good, y'all? It's a love relationship is why I keep it. This ring, listen, this ring has not kept me faithful to my wife for how long? <laughs> 27 years. But love has. I mean, the ring is just so, so all the hotties don't try to jump on me. I'm, I come, come on. No, I'm kidding. You know I'm kidding. <laughs> the ring is a, is a, is a mark. It's, it's a seal that says I'm not available. I'm taken. Come on, yo. And the Bible says that's the way our hearts are. Paul said that I might present you a chaste virgin yeah. unto Christ. Isn't that good? Amen. Isn't that wonderful, y'all? Yes. Yes. Now, watch this. Loving me empowers you to obey my commands. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. But it's, it's love. Listen, people will ask these kind of questions. They'll say, now, now, what do you do to stay filled? What do you do to... to well, I, I wake up at 4 in the morning. I pray in the Holy Ghost till 7. And then I take communion till 8. And then I listen to all my favorite CDs till about 12. And then I just run and I shout and shout and shout for the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever till about 2.30. 2.30. No. I want you to understand it's okay to be a normal human anointed with the Spirit. Amen, this is where, listen... I have met my share, so I can speak from experiential knowledge. When, listen, we do not seek manifestations. We seek God. People that seek manifestations, listen to me, they're always goofballs. I mean, I say that, not, I'm serious. They're always goofy. And what's interesting most of them are always seeing devils of some kind. Well, listen, there's angels too. I'm talking about my experiential knowledge and dealing with people for over 20 years full time with this. I know a family right now. They're not here, so don't, you know, wonder who it is or not. But there's so much calamity in their home all the time. Calamity, just weird stuff. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. Weird stuff tragic stuff and everything's always a 10 I mean the family lives at 911 level everything's got to be 911 and everything is always a devil a demon I'm going to tell you what most of it is is carnal mindedness that they just swear is a devil well the devil's still the author of that because that's that part of the mind that's still dead hadn't been renewed with the life of God but it's, it, listen when, when, we, when you seek we're not told seek manifestations we're not told seek the cloud seek the fire no I desire the cloud I desire the fire but listen I have the cloud I have the fire right. huh yeah. are you with me where, where people, it, it's sad when people don't, don't know nothing or they don't live from any fire or cloud or glory within. Yes, so they always have to try to get in a meeting somewhere where somebody that's thrilled about the things of God has some life and fire about them. But that same fire is in them. They just need to listen, stir up the gift that is in you which came on you through the laying on of hands and the call of God. Well, that's the spirit of God. 
But every one of you have a gift on the inside of you. But listen, certain things can put that gift into dormancy. Mainly the spirit of intimidation is what will do that. All right. We might have tapped a little something right there. We might need to clean out behind that door. One, listen, the spirit of Jezebel. Say that right quick. The spirit of Jezebel. The spirit of Jezebel does not like to be out front. The spirit of Jezebel is the spirit of intimidation. A prophet named Elijah was the man of the hour. He killed 500 false prophets of Baal. Remember that? With a sword. Anointed by God. Slaughtered 500 full-grown men. And then a 100-pound woman who was possessed with the spirit of intimidation. Her name was Jezebel, but she was possessed with a spirit of intimidation. 100 pounds, she looked at him and said, I'll do the same thing you did to my, my prophets. I'm going to do that to you by morning. And the Bible says Elijah ran an entire day for his life. And listen, then he begged God to kill him. There's the spirit of suicide coming in through the spirit of intimidation. And then he's laying there and he's not eating anything. And he says, it'd be better for me not to ever even have been born. There's a spirit of hopelessness coming in. Suicidal tendency, suicidal thought that's backed up to the root of the spirit of intimidation, which is the spirit of fear, which is Satan himself. No 100-pound woman scares a man that's just blood let 500 full-grown men like that. Saints, that's a devil. When somebody can say something to you and it, I mean, hits your inner man, listen to me, that's a spirit. And that has to be dealt with spiritually. First of all, you have to win that war in your own prayer closet. I've dealt with that spirit in other people more than one, two, three, or four times. On some strong levels. I'm talking about levels. Listen, when I was learning how to beat it, listen, I'm talking about up all day and up all night, four nights in a row wrestling with it. Just, I mean, I mean shivering. Over, over that spirit of fear that's manifesting so strong. You have to take care of that in the prayer closet. You have to come against that thing in the name of Jesus. You come against that thing with Ephesians chapter 6. You build you up and remind yourself who you are in Christ. Because what will happen is the spirit of intimidation wants to lock the gift down in you so that it gets everybody who's under your authority. Huh? The spirit of intimidation, Jezebel's spirit does not want to be out front because it's easy to get exposed out there. It wants to stay in back and just intimidate the, the leader that is out front. So that spirit plays the leader like a puppet from behind the scenes so it never gets exposed. It's doing its work through the one whom it's intimidating. Are you here, somebody? So you have to know how to lead spiritually. It's very important, listen to me, that men and women, married couples, learn how to lead this thing spiritually. You don't want either spouse being able to be used by the spirit of intimidation. Huh? I've seen it work both ways. I've seen it work both ways. You can take a husband that's just henpecked down and afraid to just say, I don't believe that's God, babe. Well, why are you afraid to say that? Spirit of intimidation, spirit of intimidation, spirit of intimidation. You need to be able to look. Babe, I don't believe it's God. And we're not in agreement on this. Therefore, we are not doing that because we are not in agreement. And then you take that battle to the prayer closet because your battle is not with flesh and blood. It's with principalities and powers. Are you here? And it can be the same way. A wife has to be able to look at her husband. Jody and I grew through. through we've both grown a lot of areas, but, but she had to grow to the place. And I'm growing. I was at, in process myself, still in process, but, but where she could look at me and, and, and talk about finances. Huh? Talk about anything. If we're one, we've got to be able to talk. Are you here with me? If we ain't talking, we're dying. Because communication is the blood of a relationship. It is the life of it, right? But we had to grow where we could talk about it. the spirit of intimidation not be there. The spirit of intimidation not be there.
But you have to battle that spirit in your prayer closet. You have to win that war yourself. Then you come to the place where you can go to that individual in peace. They hadn't had no freedom from it yet. I won't use you, sir. <laughs> Listen, they haven't had any freedom yet, but I have. And I got the victory over that thing. So now I can confront them in the love of God. Say, I'd like to talk with you. Even if it's, I've been struggling with this for years. But I've taken it to prayer. And I've gotten victory over it. I just want you to know my testimony. I want you to know what God's delivered me from. The spirit of intimidation. And it was manifesting through you. I don't even know if you're aware of it. But man, I'd struggle for a week over it after you said that to me. I forgive you. I just want you to know the victory I've gotten. See, now you're at least exposing that there's something between you and me here. It's not you, and it ain't me. Are you here, somebody? You get victory over that thing. And then even if they don't pursue any victory, get any victory. That's why you got to be so careful with who you, you enter in. You don't even mean to, but I'm telling you, when you buddy-buddy with somebody, there's a soul tie made there. Your soul's one with that person. Are you here, somebody? And what happens is you don't mean to, but I'm telling you, you give them a grip in your life. If, if, if you start to do something that you feel good about or know God's leading you to, and before, right before you do it, you have, I wonder what they'll think. Soul tie, soul tie, soul tie, soul tie. Well, I wonder if that'll make them mad. Soul tie, soul tie, soul tie. God's leading you. You know you got the okay from God. Now, I'm not necessarily talking about couples here because we'll be in agreement. I'm talking about anybody outside of. For me, even as resident pastor of the church, for me, if my wife, first of all, agrees it's God, we always bring it to Pastor and Miss Don. We're excited about this. We really believe we've heard God. There are every time I'm going to say, do what God's put in your heart. But we still bring that. You always want the the agreement of those whom you respect spiritually. If, if they was to say, you know, I've sat on that for two days and I just don't have a piece about it, I'm not doing it. I'm backing off and I'm at least going to hold it. I didn't say I'm going to throw it away and think, oh, well, I thought I heard God. Well, you did hear God, but maybe it's not the time. But I'm going to have the agreement of those whom I respect spiritually. But outside of her and them, Anybody else that I would start to do something, and it's, all, it's not up here. Spirit things deal with spirit, and it'll be in here. I wonder what they're going to think. Soul tie, soul tie. Everybody say it. Soul tie. That's a soul tie. It's unhealthy, and it's rooted in the spirit of fear. You have to break that thing. And you have to break it in your prayer closet. Father, I renounce soul ties. I ask you to forgive me for whatever I did that allowed them into that place that only you deserve, God. I break that in the name of Jesus. I stand against it. Then you're going to have the opportunity next time you're in conversation with them, something might come up, and you may, in love, need to confess it. Man, I felt this. I'm not saying you're... You're putting that off, but I felt that. I just want me and you to agree that we don't have any unhealthy soul ties between us. I obey God. I bow to him only, and that's the only one you bow to. I don't bow to you. You don't bow to me. Are you here, somebody? It's unhealthy, and it, it gives the spirit of fear just a handle, a grip in your life. When God leads you to do something, oh, man, I'm thrilled about this. And then when it comes time to do it, I wonder what they're going to think. Boy, I, don't, I hope they're not mad at me. What's it doing? What is the motive? It's to lock down the gift of God in you so that it robs you of your spiritual authority. If I rob you of your spiritual authority, I affect you, you, and Corbin. And anybody on your job that is submitted to your authority, I affect them too through my spirit of intimidation on him. Adam wasn't after Eve, or the devil wasn't after Eve. He's, he's going through Eve to get to Adam. Are you here? 
So you just have to, you have to be sensitive to the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of revelation, the, the discernment of the spirit inside. I made a, an unhealthy pact with a person many years ago, and, and man, the spirit of the Lord reminded me of that so many times. I mean, I, he told me, he said, we make a pact. Oh, he said, we make a pact. And I said, we make a pact. I'm going to tell you what. What'd that do? <laughs> Soul tie. You just cut covenant with that person. Blood wasn't shed, but in the spirit realm, we make a pact. You've declared it. And that thing had a place in my life that wasn't good. Let me tell you something. I won't ever tell Ty, as close as we are, I won't ever tell him, I'm with you forever, Ty. He'll never hear those words come out of my mouth. I'm with God forever. Now, it's different here. Make sure we understand that. But outside of that, huh, and my children, I don't know what God's going to lead Ty and Sarah tomorrow or 15 years from now. I pray it's here and I believe it is. But I still wouldn't say that to manipulate. I believe we'll be together forever. Don't you say that, minister. You don't say that. You don't have the right to say it. It's unclean. It's perversion. It's perverted. Or proverted. A professional pervert. Are you here with me, somebody? Huh? It's perverted. That's how, listen, that's how, cult, that's what a cult is. It's, it's holding you here under guilt and manipulation. That's what a cult is. And it gets so, so infected, man. Think about Jim Jones and all these others. You think about Jim Jones, if you've ever watched that whole story and really dove into it deep. Those people were standing in line waiting to go up there and drink that stuff. And he's up there just, I mean, a lamb with horns, brother. And I'm, I, I was watching that thinking, you got to be kidding. There's two guys out there with assault rifles, just two. There's hundreds of us. Well, at least half of them are bros. I don't care if he kills 50 of us. He can't kill us all. But the spirit of manipulation, y'all, come on, had, had daddy and mama and their kids walking and waiting in line to go up there and get that cyanide injected into them. They'd walk out there a few feet and fall over dead. And I'm thinking, that's how strong the spirit of manipulation is. Uh-uh. No, no. Honky here is taking somebody out. I, you're not doing that to me or this or mine. It won't happen. But all them, I'm just looking at all these people waiting their place in line to go up there and lay it down. And Jim Jones over there talking that, that perverted, perverted gospel. We're one family. This is better for... Oh, <laughs> I, we just need to move on past that. It ain't right. Listen, that's the spirit of manipulation. Well, listen, when, when you feel like you're being pushed to do something and your inner man wants to say, back off of me to them, that's not a right spirit. It's, because listen, it's the dominion of God in you. How you handle it is important, but it's the dominion in, it, it, in you that's wanting to tell them, back off of me now. We have dominion over everything except humans. So when a human tries to exercise dominion over another human, it, ain't, it don't fly good. Am I right? Amen. Why? Because you've been told by God in your spirit, have dominion. Come on. Yeah. We have to be wise. We have to be, we have to be wise as the serpent. <laughs> he didn't say be wise as serpents. Be wise as snakes. He said, be wise as the serpent. Definite article in Greek. That's, we're focused on the main one. Be wise as the devil himself, but be harmless as the dove. But I tell you, 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 you got to be wise. Don't hook it. Don't, 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 don't say things to, to people. Listen, I, I, I really love people, and I love to say, I appreciate you, and I thank God that we're together. I thank God he sent you. 
But listen, when somebody in leadership believes, I don't want to get way down that path, but that God's moving them in a, in a, in a different direction. Listen, I'll tell you this. As a shepherd of a flock, you already know that. I knew six weeks before the last big change shifted. We're not even going to go into that. We haven't even brought it. It's not important. It's done. And, and I knew six weeks before that. Why? Because the pastor knows the state of his flocks. How does he know that? By the Spirit. It's part of the grace gift. Information is given there. But even if, listen, I, in that setting, if, if they believe God was leading them, and you got to make sure, don't you put guilt on it? <sighs> don't you do that. Never, ever, ever manipulate Manipulation's a mean thing. It's a snake, boy. It's, it's, it's stealth. It's sneaky. Withholding love. Withholding sex. With, that's manipulation. You're doing something to bend that person against their will. Manipulation. I mean, cause it's, it's, yeah. That's a redneck definition of it. She could give you a lot more professional definition than I can, but that's a good <laughs> bold down redneck. If you're pulling me against my will with words or feelings, you're wrong for doing it. And so am I. We're doing all right. Have to be wise with it. Have to be wise. It was a liberating day. It was, I'm talking about a day of like jubile triumphant day for me when I found out and, and pushed myself to the, I have a right to say no. And then I stepped out and I said, no. Let me tell you something. If you've been picked on and punked on, come on. And you live with hate in your heart, man. And, and you, you, go thir you go 30 plus years over somebody that beat you up, that jumped you that didn't come at you right and they jumped you and 30 years later you're a grandpa and you're still thinking about homeboy you with me somebody you still wanting payback you see him with him and now his grandkids and you want to slap his grandkid and say no I'm just saying it, it works it, it, there's, thing, there's things that grow in you because of that stuff and God has to free you of that stuff yeah but it's, the, it, it's wrong spirits. Remember what the Spirit of God brought up in the seminar? Don't believe every spirit. And I'm telling you, saints, be careful with what you say to people. Don't you enter in, don't say something. Don't, don't talk, uh, don't create covenants that you don't know what God's going to bring in your life or theirs tomorrow. you you got to make sure you don't do that. You don't want anybody staying just for you. You want them to stand because of God. Huh? If you get them with you by yourself outside of God, you will have to keep them with you. If God brings them in, God will keep them. First time I heard pastors say, I wanted a wife that loved God more than me. Man, that scared me. I thought, whoa, it was a threat. Well, but after we kept growing and growing and growing, grew through all kinds of ugly mess, mostly in me. I thought I learned is better. She loves God more than she loves you. She'll overcome the things that makes her want to leave you to stay with you. If she don't love God, she just loves you. When she's sick of you, she's out of love with you. You with me, somebody? And same on vice versa in. No matter, no matter what, what, listen, no matter how many pounds your wife gains, I didn't fall in love with you because I want to say something right here. Adam and Adam didn't even know they had a body till the glory was left them, and then he saw her body. So it wasn't her body from day one that drew me to her. I mean, it didn't hurt nothing, you know. <laughs> but I'm just saying. So listen. When she has babies, that's not, I didn't fall in love with her body. 
This is all tied together because you don't want her going into performance mode for you because that's, that's wrong spirits. And when she figures out the dance, just change the dance. Mean spirits, man, mean spirits. Any women here ever lived under that? Raise your hand, please. Come on. You know? But God sets us free. His word and his spirit. That's the pruning shears of God. It's always in love. It's never rash. It's never mean. It's never blungent. It's so smooth. He just sets us free. But there's that covenant of love that holds us together. And the Bible says if love is not the glue that holds us together, we won't be able to stay together. And I thank God this is a house that, my Lord, it's just it's oozy with glue. <laughs> but the glue of love, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Because outside of that, somebody hurts your feelings, I'll just leave. Yeah. Well, they just don't appreciate me. Well, God does. That ought to be enough. Exactly. Well, you know, he, he told this department and that department how much he appreciated them. He didn't tell us that. Well, God does. That ought to be enough. Yes, you know. I tell you what, there's times in the, in the anointing, God will blind me of certain things. I had it happen one time. I was going, I started on this side of the platform. And I said, Father, I just thank you for this person. I looked at him, called him out by name, and you gave, gave God glory. You remember, you were here. That I went to the next person. I called them out. Father, I give you glory for them. And I thank you for them. I got to the drum. Father, I thank you for Asha. And I give you glory. Father, I thank you. I never even saw I'm not going to point to what side. It doesn't matter. I'm just saying I started with, for example. I got to a certain person. I'm telling you they weren't there. I, they, they were, I, I didn't even see them. They were gone. They were there. The, listen to me. The Spirit. sense a pocket on a shirt the same crowd that said Hosanna in the highest is the ones that said crucify him same crowd same crowd you can go through the word and just look at I put a message together years ago same crowd called same crowd it's this crowd they said this then they're killing him same crowd that said this now they're killing him same crowd that now they're stoning him same crowd said that now they're stoning him that's why you, listen, you can't put your trust in that stuff. Oh, I can trust them. How do you know? Under the right setting, I wonder if you can. But you've got to be very careful not to make soul ties. I'm down to a minute 33. But we followed the anointing. Have you gotten anything out of this yet? This is, this is, this is, this this changes life for you. I'll end with this because Colossians 2, again, what God kept bringing up in the seminar says, in him is the fullness of the Godhead in bodily form and we are complete in him. We are complete in the anointing. Have you noticed in the anointing, in that presence, there's no insecurity? Let me, let me throw this out here. That's why when we get to heaven, I do believe there is families I'm, I'm not because because brother so and so said. I, well, I'm thankful for what brother so and so. What does brother word say? That's what we build our confidence in. Well, I had a vision and I saw families. Well, I'm glad you're not the Bible. Show me in the Bible, because I don't rest my eternal security on what you believe you've seen, because that's just what you believe you've seen. And too many people live in their spiritual lives based on what so and so said they saw. What's the word of God say? But in heaven, that's why there's not sexual relationship. Whereas the angels are. Because listen, there's no need for it. We're complete in the anointing. Huh? Sexual relationship was given to replenish the earth. Huh? I hear you. 
I think Andrew turned the volume up when it started. <laughs> it, 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 God brought that in to replenish the earth. Replenish. Huh? Outside of replenishing the earth, listen to me, especially for the male gender, it's a deficiency that needs it. Man ha a man has to have it. Right? It's his number two greatest need. In heaven, there is no need. The Father and the Lamb are the light thereof, and they are the temple. There is no light there. The glory of the Lord is the light. And, and, and when, where that relationship is considered with sexual relations, we're complete in the anointing. You just, just take whatever degree it was that we experienced during the Winter Bible Seminar, and especially that heaviest morning, there's no insecurity in the building. There's no fear in the building. There was no pain. Be honest with me tonight. How many of you may have felt some symptoms of some pains that you know weren't there during the anointing? Raise your hand. See, and that's okay. I understand. I have too. Well, I, we don't give up on the healing. We know it belongs to I'm just saying my point is in the anointing, we're complete. And that's just at that degree. How much more when mortal is <coughs> swallowed up with the immortality? You talk about uh, shalom, shalom. <laughs> nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken, nothing out of place, nothing out of socket. No curse no. Huh? of any kind. Nothing that falls under the heading of darkness. Nothing. No shadow. Isn't that something? So we're complete in the anointing. That's why it's so important to live out of that anointing and practice the presence of God. Do things to, to, to keep filled with the Spirit of God. I'm telling you, man, life will, life will just drain you if you're not careful. It'll drain you. Sooner or later, you've got to just pull over and stop at the fuel station and get filled up, don't you? Get filled up. I'm taking, no, tonight, no. I'm not doing that tonight. I'm going to zone out with the Lord. I'm going to get my Bible. I'm just going to get along with God. Well, I wanted to watch our favorite TV show. Well, you watch it, babe. I, need, I just need to refill. I'll be better for me and you. Full of the Spirit and full of the Word. You'll love me for it. You'll thank me for it. <laughs> Did you get anything out of this tonight? Father, we're so grateful for your word, for your presence, for your wisdom, for your anointing. We believe that, 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 that what you've said tonight has set some captivity.